Thank you very much, uh, dear Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. It's indeed a privilege and an honor for me to be here, and I thank the Society for this opportunity. I'm going to concentrate not really significantly on the robot in this talk of mine, but specifically hybrid, because a hybrid surgery does not have to be done with a robot. You could do a mid-cap not using a new robot, using just direct IT harvest, using different types of techniques we have, and combine that with uh, a PCI of the other vessels. So let me just see if I can kind of convince that this is an upcoming, I think, technique. I think the data is missing still, but I think that hopefully we can get this data in the future. Okay, first of all, I want to say where London is. If you look at Canada, Canada's obviously a big country. London is right situated just at, uh, very close to the border of uh, US. And one of the most attractive things about Canada, about London, is it's closest to a city called Stratford. Um, this is just basically slightly east, which is very festival for the Stratford Festival. So if anybody makes it this time, of course, do not come in the winter time. But if you come in the summertime, it's a very great place to be. And interestingly is I was very surprised that the weather in Scotland is very similar to what we're experiencing in Canada. I guess it feels like more like a home. <laughs> so this is my disclosures. So what's the optimal revascularization strategy to reduce perioperative risk and morbidity, maximize durability, and maximize survival? But what is definition of high risk? We've talked about high risk coronary patient. What is it? Do we go by saying Euro scores are greater than six? Society thoracic score predicted mortality greater than four. Does that include such characteristics such as elderly greater than 75, peripheral vascular disease, poor left ventricular function, or people who are at risk of sternotomy, such as obese, immunosuppressed diabetics, and of course people with chronic pulmonary disease? Or do we have to look at the coronary anatomy, look at the syntax score? Syntax score greater than 32, people with left main disease. So what's hybrid? Well, hybrid is a definition where you do a combination of specifically doing a minimal invasive revascularization of the LAD with the left intraanthoracic artery, and then PCI of the other non-LAD vessels. This can be done either simultaneously or in a stage procedure. This was first introduced from the group, again, Dr. Angelini, Dr. Calafiori in 1996. Uh, this was the very first publication of it, where they presented it in Lancet, where they had four staged cases and two simultaneous cases. In the past, Cardiologists and cardiac surgeons will be working in silos. They work in the cath lab, and we work in the operating theater. But however, I think we have to look in the future and to work as a teamwork. <laughs> of course, that may have some problems, but however, you have to accept that's a different culture. So hybrid coronary vascularization, because of the lack of randomized trials involving different risk groups, has hindered the identification of what's the best target group for such patients. Consequently, physicians and surgeons have not embraced this type of technology, specifically in high-risk cases. So if you look at the Cesarea Thoracic Surgery database between July 2011 and March 2013, if you looked at the data, only hybrid rev uh, represented 0.48%. That means out of 198,622 cases during that period of time, 950 of these were only hybrid. Therefore, if we look at what is the guidelines, if we look at the American College of Cardiology, I mean, AHA, they say the primary purpose of performing a hybrid is to decrease the morbidity rate of traditional cabbage in high-risk patients. The European Society guideline says hybrid has a class 2B recommendation for specific patient subsets and only at experience centers. The Canadian Cardiovascular Society guideline says is typically performed with minimal invasive incisions, combines, again, the uh, combination of leta to LAD with PCI of the other vessels, and there's some studies have showed some study in effectiveness. Their indication is class 2A, when basically you have one or more of the following, which is evidence B, limitation to traditional cabbage, such as heavily calcified proximal aorta, or you have poor target vessels for cabbage that are not amenable to PCI, lack of suitable graft conduits, and unfavorable LAD territory for PCI. Their class 2B indication is may be reasonable as an alternative to multivessel PCI in an attempt to reduce the overall risk to benefit ratio of the procedure. So a hybrid revascular, should it be more adopted? The answer is yes, it's about time for it to be adopted. The reason why is provides the team with another treatment option. Traditionally, if you look at the rationale for it, is leading to LAD has been shown to be the most effective in terms of any type of event-free survival, relief of vagina, long-term patency. 
later to LED contributes to the majority of the survival advantage that's been seen by majority of the studies. And of course, as we have seen, with the technology of the stents improving early restenosis of PCI of the non-LED vessels, with the drug eluding stents it continues to improve, and specifically is shown to be some superiority to saphenous vein grafts. So as you can see, the LETA graft has always had a long-term patency versus the attrition that we see with vein grafts. So if you look at the saphenous vein graft failure, at 10 years, about 10 to 30% of them fail, and 50% occlusion rate at 10 years, and we look at the drug drug delivering stents, the patency is actually quite good. Stent thrombosis are 2 to 3% at 5 years, and restenosis 10 to 15% at 10 years. Of course, nothing comes close to multi arterial revascization, which is shown to improve survival from numerous studies, specifically this one from the Mayo Clinic. But if you look like what is really happening in the real world, syntax trial is a good one. In the syntax trial, Basically, they're showing that out of basically 2.8 plus or minus 0.7 grafts that were performed for each patient, only 27% of these were bilateral IMAs, and only 19% of them was complete arterial revascularization. Hence, despite all the evidence that multi-arterial is much better, we continue to utilize saphenous vein grafts, and I don't think we can continue like that in surgery. So what's the evidence? Well. If you look at this particular uh, propensity trial that came from the group of Dr. Puskis in Emory, they looked at, again, the Society of the Thoracic Surgery database, and they compared uh, by propensity matching patients that underwent conventional cabbage versus hybrid cabbage. And when they looked at their basic kind of, you can say, 30-day major adverse events, there was not significantly different in terms of death, MI, or stroke. However, the two things that were different was the recovery time, it was shorter length of stay in the hospital, and specifically also need for blood transfusion was much less in the group that underwent hybrid surgery. And specifically, when they looked at the two cohorts here, one looking at hybrid uh, revascularization um, compared to op-cap and off-pump, as you can see, uh, years of surgery, and this is looking at the death from any cause, that basically hybrid was very similar compared to the two groups. Interestingly, when they looked at bilateral IMAs, single IMAs, and also hybrid, was very, very similar. Again, again, this is over a three-year period, has not allowed enough time to show the advantage of bilateral ITA. So their conclusion was that hybrid decreases morbidity, decreases chest tube drainage, decreases blood transfusion, and decreases length of stay in the hospital. Another meta-analysis from this group showed that when you looked at death, MI, stroke, target vessel revascularization, and also MACE, there was no significant difference if you looked at in this group here is the hybrid, this group is a conventional surgery, no significant difference. The trend maybe for MACE was slightly more favorable towards hybrid. This is at one year, similar type of thing they looked at. Again, looking at the same kind of factors, you can see that, again, not a significant difference, but the trend is slightly more towards uh, a hybrid. And however, in the target revascularization, uh, uh, recurrent revascularization, slightly the same. Uh, so their conclusion was that there's very similar in hospital and one-year follow-up in death, MI, stroke, and MACE, lower blood transfusion, shorter length of stay in the hospital, and faster recovery. This uh, um, kind of review uh, was done looking at several different studies, and it was very good specifically looking at these two particular studies, uh, looking at the combination of hybrid versus uh, um, conventional cabbage, and they found that when they looked at um, all-cause mortality, again, was no significant difference, but favored hybrid, but when they looked at any revascularization, recurrent revascularization, favored cabbage. This particular group, uh, Shen et al., they did an uh, analysis looking at patients' um, syntax scores and also looking at their um, euro scores, and they noticed that when they compared it to off-pump and, uh, and PCI, to on-pump and PCI, they noticed that as the syntax score increased, hybrid did as well, potentially maybe better than cabbage. And they looked at the Euro scores, when you look at the high-risk patients, again, hybrid did relatively well in terms, again, of the uh, events of MACE. So the only, only really randomized trial has come from Poland, where they looked 200 patients, randomized them to base 98 hybrid, 102 conventional cabbage, they use a, a drug-eluting stent. And again, both at 30 days and one year, they found no difference in death, myocardial infarction, and stroke. And when they looked at the MACE of 12 months, 
comparing the cabbage to the hybrid was no different. Dr. Poskis most recently, prior to him starting on his NIH trial, he did an observation study looking at multivessel coronary disease either doing hybrid versus multivessel PCI, which answers Alan's basically comment about why not just do PCI if we're going to do basically PCI anyways. In this particular group of patients, again, these are not high-risk group of patients they looked at, but however, if you analyze it a bit further in terms of uh, the cardiopulmonary history of previous operation in terms of previous cardiac surgery, cerebrovascular disease, and also uh, myocardial infarction, the hybrid group had a higher, although was not statistically significant, compared when prior to doing the propensity matching to them. Again, he looked at the coronary anatomy here. You can see that we're more left main in the hybrid group, and also the syntax score maybe was slightly higher in the hybrid group compared to the group that underwent multivessel PCI. In this particular, uh, the patients underwent PCI. Uh, of course, this is the PCI kind of details and the patient that underwent basically hybrid. As you can see, not all of them utilize your robotics. Sometimes the mid-cap can be done in these patients. So this is not only basing in a robotic-assisted surgery. A mace of 30 days and 12 months, again, they found no difference in the group that underwent hybrid versus multivessel PCI in this observation trial. As you can see, the stroke, and also the thing was no significant difference statistically. And this is their maze-free survival looking at the Kaplan-Meier curve in terms of comparing hybrid to multivessel PCIs. So their conclusion was that maze rates at 12 months was no difference between multivessel PCI versus hybrid approach. And hence, this is leading to them, which they've started their NIH trial. In our institution, we do uh, quite where I'm personally myself a big proponent of hybrid. I think that we have to basically look at this technology as the upcoming future. We can either do this as a staged approach or a simultaneous approach, depending on patient's coronary anatomy. Depends what our cardiologists like to do it either in the hybrid theater or they like to do it in their own cath lab. Thus far, we've done 191, 53 or two stage, 138 or single stage. Again, if you look at even in our volume, this is less than 2% our PCI volume and about 2% of the yearly cabbage volume at our institution. So basically, the way we do it, we do the surgery first, we reset the room if it's going to be done a simultaneous approach. For this, we use Angiomax or Bivalarudin. We do the leader check, then clopetrical, or now we usually we've switched to tegracolor. Uh, it's being given through the NG tube, and that's a one-stage procedure. And a two-stage procedure, generally either the next day or, the, or maybe the two days after the patient undergoes the PCI. And this is our strategy that we use for uh, anticoagulation for a, for a patient that undergo <coughs> one stage. Bivalrudin is given once the lita is harvested. This is where the surgery is performed. Lita angiography is done here. Plavix is given. Then the PCI is done. So if we look at length of stay in the hospital, it's basically a median of three days. We now are ultra fast track in these patients, 89 patients thus far, and they get discharged second day postoperatively after minimum invasive of cabbage plus PCI. So we presented this at EACTS in 2016. We did a, a propensity matching of all our hybrid compared to this group was the off-pump two-vessel disease patients, 147 in the basically patients who underwent a hybrid operation and 216 off-pump cabbage. If you looked at their variables, again, these are not high-risk patients. They're very similar in terms overall of the different variables. If you look at the results, specifically I want to bring your attention is ventilation post-operatively was basically longer in the off-pump group and also uh, specifically re-intervention was more in the hybrid group because we did a cath on all these patients and if we were not happy with the leta anastomosis, we redid the leta anastomosis always. In terms of the results, length of stay again was reduced in the group that underwent the hybrid surgery, and of course, recurrent angina was less in the group that underwent hybrid surgery, and we really didn't have really own significant explanation for that. We presented the Society of Thoracic Surgeons. Now we compared our hybrid group to on-pump cabbage. Again, similar 147 hybrid to 682 on-pump operation of patients with double vessel disease. Again, we did the propensity matching. Again. If you looked at the parameters in terms of preoperative variables are very, very similar between these groups. These are not, again, high-risk group of patients. Their ejection fraction is relatively normal. And again, they're not significantly high. And we didn't look at syntax score specifically, which I think is very critical to do that. In terms of the results, again, transfusion rate was significantly lower in the hybrid group. And death was lower in the hybrid group compared to the on-pump cabbage. 
If you look at the second results in terms of the uh, uh, follow-up uh, months, we saw that definitely, again, was freedom from angina was better in the hybrid group. So what's the evidence thus far? Even though we need larger randomized controlled trials, TUS for hybrid is safe and feasible in short-term results similar to conventional cabbage, and specifically in very highly selected patients. Has the possibility of reducing these infect uh, of complications such as sternal wound infections, neurological complication, transfusion rates, length of stay in the hospital, much quicker return to work. I think that the evidence has shown that the MACE outcomes is less in higher risk potential patients However, this is a target that we need to aim more. Specifically, an intermediate group has been shown that definitely reduces the length of stay in the hospital and quicker return to work. The way I look at hybrid is, again, it's a complementary and as another tool, uh, you can say, another tool in the box for the surgeon and the interventionist to work together. So the take-home points are, thus far, hybrid has been shown to be effective and feasible for stable coronary disease, favorable anatomy, intermediate risk and syntax scores, preserved or mild left ventricular function. I think that the data for high-risk patients is lacking and that we need to do that. So hence, in terms of who won the debate, I don't think I've got enough data to show in high-risk patients hybrid is the way to go, but the trend is that way. So we need more clinical studies, specifically diabetics, high-risk patients. So as, as Alexander Graham Bell mentioned, when one door closes, another opens, but we so often look so long and so regretfully upon the closed door that we do not see the ones which open for us. And as Theodore Roosevelt said, comparison is a thief of joy. Thank you very much. This is my team of prevascization.